So there's kind of clay everywhere around here. Where? Um, if we just like look for kind of like literally that yellow oh. stuff, that is that is oh, clay right. and slightly different colour. It'll have slightly different minerals in it. So, yeah. Should we go have a look for somewhere else? Yeah. Right where we are, the hill we're on, there's just like clay everywhere. What am I looking for? So we're looking for, often clay in the wild, they have this kind of yellowy, browny colour, mm -hmm. um, which is from the specific minerals in it. Yeah, you can give it a poke. Oh, it's like chocolate mousse. It is, isn't it? And the texture of it is another really good way of like finding it. Like if you get your bit of clay and like squidge it between your fingers, uh -huh. it kind of like takes a shape, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And it's holding that form. I think for me, the, the main attraction to clay as a material is definitely that human element. You know, I make tiles, I also make domestic pots, things that people use every day. And I think the fact that we live in clay houses, we eat off clay plates, we use mugs, it's such an integral part of the way that we live as humans, you know, in, in society. I, and I love that. I love the fact that, you know, people can relate to the things that I do. So a coil pot is a fantastic technique for beginners to use, especially if they want to do something large scale or create a dynamic, dynamic shape that might be difficult for them to learn on the wheel. I'm just blending in the coils here. Um, I mean, for me, it's probably the, the tactability thing. I think touch is, a, is the language for me that I can relate to mostly. I'm quite a practical, physical person, so personally, that's how it talks to me, just through, I can, it gives me the opportunity to use my hands. And that's, I think that's my intelligence, is to be able to use my hands and feel and touch and stuff. Mm. Okay. So what do I do? So grab a chunk. Okay. This stuff's like a really good Let's consistency to work with. There might be a worm in that one. A worm? <laughs> I think I just saw one. We've got some really good stuff. Give yeah. that a squeeze. Okay. Yeah. I know, it feels so good, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, look at that. I know, so you can see how it's clear because it holds its shape when yes. you squeeze it. And we can do the clay test to test if it's clay. What's the clay test? So if you grab one of these, okay. <gasps> and then if we wrap that around your finger, okay. and if it doesn't crack and it works, that means okay. that it's clay. <gasps> yes. Hey, look at that. Nice. It goes with New my ring. clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Should we find another spot? Yeah, find some more. So <clears throat> I take a slug of clay, I bat down the edges, and that's just because if you have a sharp edge, um, as you roll that into the mould, you'll see that sharp edge cut across the texture. And then I work my way around the tile in quite a methodical way. So I go from the centre out, and then from the centre out. And that's just so that you don't get any of that clay folding over itself again. Um, and you kind of get a double press, and you get a crease across the surface of the tile. So it just gives you a nice smooth finish. Fold the edges back. I just pat that down in case I've lifted the clay out. I draw the harp over and I'm using my fingers to keep it flush against the top surface of the mould. I think the thing with tiles is that they've been so widely used, um, and not just on this continent, you know, it's something that's been, they're, they're things that have been used worldwide, um, you know, and, and they're always um, built around function, but also ornamentation and decoration. And they kind of speak of the society that they've been made for, you know, whether that's through the patterns, through the way they've been made, and they, and they look as fresh now as they did 200, 300, 400 years ago. Um, 
you know, they don't age. Unlike me, unfortunately. <laughs> Fundamentally, you are actually learning to work with nature and the, the four elements. Earth, fire, water, air. Um, and yeah, you, there is a balance to it. You are learning how to uh, walk that fine line of when it's too dry, too wet, too hard, too soft, too hot, too cold. All of these things um, you, you gain a sensitivity to. And once you really understand the material inside out, this becomes a really enjoyable dance with the material. I mean, the whole point in using these machines, the wheel, is to make round pieces, really. Because you just sit there with a lump of clay and your job is to actually stretch it out stretch out that lump of clay you're not you're not actually pulling it so much you're you're stretching it out to a to your desired thickness and then you're adding form as you go do you want to make a little pinch pot yes That's what i we call this. would love to what do you want to make it out of the one the clay we've got there yes yeah okay what do I do? So grab a little bit of clay. Okay. I'll do the top of this Yes, one, please. <laughs> Support me. I am, I am. Okay. Get lots of clay. Rip that bit's got a big bit of mud, so I'm going to rip oh, that off. Right. So we can't mix it? Well, we can, but it's better to have it like more okay. clay. And then we're going to roll it like into a ball okay. in the palms of your hands. Nice and squishy. Mm. <laughs> and then you shove your thumb into the middle. Okay. Like this. Yep. And then you just squeeze around the edge and pinch. Ooh. And there we go. We've got a little a little bowl. Ah! A vessel. I just can't believe I've just gone and done that. So how do I make it hard? So then you have to you wait for it to dry out completely, mm -hmm. just in the air. And then you put it in what's called a kiln, which is like an oven like on steroids that goes up to like a thousand degrees. And then it goes from being this mushy thing to being this ceramic thing that's going to be around <gasps> forever. Could I stick this in my oven? You can, but it will, it will like, won't really, it'll just dry out, but it would, if you then put water on it, it will just turn back into clay. The oh. oven doesn't, unless your oven goes up to like 600 degrees, does okay. it? No. One thing that unites us all is is the material is the clay and, and and the thing that's so lovely about that clay is whether you have any knowledge any skills um, whether you've ever touched it before in your life it's something that you can pick up it's malleable you can work with it and once that clay's fired it's permanent it will last for thousands of years you know and and that transcends any idea of skill knowledge environment class you know anybody can use that clay and can make things with it and that's the thing that i love most about it I would say if you're starting out and, and learning how to work with clay, really um, build a relationship with the clay and just get to know the material and un start to understand it. It's talking all the time and you've got to be listening. Learning how to work with clay, it can be a quite a long process. Um, but it's really rewarding at the end of it when you're satisfied with what you've created and you're really at one with yourself. So it's a really beautiful journey between you and the clay. The fact that this takes the form of a tankard is quite important because actually, you know, I love domestic function. I love the fact that people are taking things into their hands and they're using them. This um, figure, this action figure, um, played such an important role in my life that, um, you know, it almost becomes celebratory and, uh, you know, using this object 
on a special occasion is part of that kind of celebration of that sense of sort of uh, identity that this character was part of forming, um, but also, you know, the fact that hopefully this object will go out into the world and project those ideas and thoughts out for other people to share. Um, essentially was about that idea of the other, you know, I growing up it was the N-word, you know, I, I wasn't conscious of being other until I was told I was by society, you know, and that's something I'm still trying to come to terms with and understand, you know, even now into my 40s. The aim is to, is to make it symmetrical when people learn the wheel. That's the main difference between, like, hand-building. I mean, you can learn to hand-build with perfection in, like, some of the artists in the show, like Madeline, she does. It's very streamlined, but uh, generally people aren't patient enough um, so the wheel is really good for getting it symmetrical. Um, me personally, I find I'm a bit bored of that now. I've spent two years making straight pots, so my pots are straight to the... I'd say they're kind of straight to the eye, but... They're, they sometimes are a bit... Sometimes I'll purposely scrunch them up and make them a bit wobbly or knock them a bit, you know? <laughs> Drop them and pick them back up. <laughs> But um, it's all part of the charm. I started digging clay out of like an environmental viewpoint and I wanted to use like a material that I knew exactly where it had come from. And like, it's a really slow process, like making it like from mud into a pot. And I kind of really enjoyed that really like slow craft. I really like that every pot I make is very unique to where it's come from. Like I can be like this pot, has come from that, la that bit of land there, almost like down to the exact metre. Well, every clay has slightly different like, properties in it, will do something different, so you kind of get this like, amazing range of like, the material. But also like, women have like, this really, really rich history with ceramics and pot making, and it was a very domestic thing. And that's something else that I really love about ceramics, is that it connects you to this amazing history of women.